Hey everybody, this is Jason Creel of This is the Lawn Care Life. Today I'm going over five pros and five cons of being a solo lawn care business owner. Now you may have your mind made up. You may think, you know what, I think being solo is the greatest thing ever. Or you may have your mind up that being solo is a terrible idea. So I would ask you to hear me out, hear my arguments, please add to the list, please correct me when I'm wrong in the comments, and let me know what you think. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Yardbook. If you want to get into the lawn care business solo or with 100 employees, consider going to yardbook.com and open up a free account. The first thing I want to mention is I've had both employees and operate solo. I currently operate solo, not necessarily because I think that's the greatest thing of all time. Uh, I can see the pros and cons of both sides. Uh, but because I, I do YouTube videos and that takes a good bit of time and I want to keep my lawn care business at a manageable size, that's what I've chosen to do and it also fits my lifestyle. Now if I didn't do YouTube videos and, and wanted to just work on lawns all the time, I may look at having a small amount of employees. Now for me personally, I think it has a lot to do with the personality of the business owner. Are you able to handle the employees or not? That's not exactly my strength, I'm not saying I couldn't do it. But I know some people that, that are great at that, it's a better fit for them. So let's start with the pros first, the five pros of being a solo operator, and then we'll go over the five cons of, uh, of being a solo operator, because there's definitely both sides. Number one pro, these are in no particular order, and this one may be obvious, but the number one pro reason to not to run solo is you don't have to manage employees, and you don't have to find employees. If you imagine the amount of Facebook posts I have seen where people saying looking for help, having this trouble, this employee can't find good help, restaurants half capacity because we don't have enough people to work and all this and the other and that. And you don't have to deal with that because you are fully staffed with yourself showing up every day. <laughs> so, I mean, that is a benefit, okay? I'm not, I, yeah, there's some negatives to that. But the one benefit is you have got one fine, great employee who shows up every day. He never calls in sick, or if he does, he lets you know in plenty ahead of time because you are he. He is you, and there is no avoiding that. The second thing I want to mention as far as a pro being solo is the flexibility that it gives me. So I'll just use myself as an example. If I want to go work 18 hours tomorrow, I just go work 18 hours. I start at 5 a.m. with a flashlight, going out there, fertilizing, spraying, mowing, whatever you want to do, and uh, all your commercial properties as long as you can. And then when it gets 8 o'clock, you start going to the residential properties and you stay out there in the summertime till 8 o'clock at night if you want to. And just that may not add it up to 18 hours, but you can have some really, really long days. And then if you want to take four days off in a row, then just take four days off in a row. You don't have to ask anybody. You can rearrange your workload. Now, you know, it's going to be hard to take four days off in a row mowing grass in the summertime. But if you can arrange your schedule, get the work done, keep the customers happy, you have flexibility. If my kid has some kind of event at school at, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, guess what? I can be there just about every single time. Now, maybe I have to stay a little bit later in the evening, whatever. I can typically adjust things work harder, work faster, move things around, and it gives me flexibility. The way I do this in my weed control and fertilization business is I'm, I'm doing rounds, you know, fertilizer, spray and lawn. So I, when I get done with my round, I sometimes have some time off. Well, if I work a little bit longer days, work faster, harder, then it gives me a little bit more off time, downtime, and I'm able to do that because I can, you know, and if I don't want to, then I don't have to. If I'm sick, I don't want to. If I feel lazy one day, I just don't have to. I mean, it is, you have the control, the flexibility, and I think that is a huge benefit of being a solo operator. Now, the third reason may be slightly more controversial. You can nitpick the language of this if you want to, uh, but I think it's more profitable. Now, does it mean that you're gonna make ultimately more profits as in higher numbers? Well, no, that, that would not make sense, though occasionally that is the case. When I say more profit, I'm talking about a percentage. Now, some people are gonna say here, oh, wait a minute, Jason, it, you know, let's say you make $150,000 revenue, okay, and you pay yourself $50,000 and then all your expenses are this and your business profited $40,000, you know, really, your business profited $40,000 because you were your employee. That was a business expense, your 50000 
Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, technically that is true. Okay, I understand that. But if I am myself and the employee and I myself am also the business owner, then fine, I'll put $50,000 in my left pocket and I'll put the $40,000 from the business in my right pocket. It's all going to me, okay? So I, I get that, but it's different than if I paid $50,000 to somebody else who is a different human and he's gonna put it in his pocket. He's not gonna put it in my pocket. So when I say more profitable, obviously when you're the one out there doing all the work, you're saving yourself some labor expense of hiring somebody else to do the work. At least you can probably agree with me on that. Now, is the idea of you being out there doing all the work a great idea? Well, not necessarily, but it does make you more money if you go out there and do all the work uh, compared to paying somebody else to go do the same amount of work because now you don't have to pay that person. You just keep it for yourself. The fourth reason, and I think this is a big one, especially with me running my weed control and fertilization business, I'm able to maintain the quality. I know the history of these lawns. If I've been taking care of a particular lady's lawn for seven years, and I know the history of that lawn, I know what weeds are likely to pop up in the summer. I know this one area gets nutsedge in the, in the summertime. I know uh, she gets onions over here in the wintertime. I know everything about that yard for the past seven years because I either made notes in my software or I just have a, a decent memory and it's all stuck in my head, then I, I think that's a, an advantage versus some guy that I hired last week rolls up on it and he just looks at it. And I think I'm able to maintain the quality because I know how much I care about each lawn. I'm not taking shortcuts, cutting corners when I'm taking care of the lawn. So I mean, a solo operator, typically speaking, is going to care more about the properties they're taking care of than an employee they hire. Now you might find an exceptional employee who cares a great deal about the properties, maybe even as much as the owner. But most of the time, the owner is going to care more about the properties and those customers than an employee. I think you hopefully would agree with that. And the fifth benefit of being a solo operator is it's gonna reduce your risk. So when you have employees, why do you gotta have more insurance, more workman's comp, all this other stuff? Because you're more risk, more exposure of being out there by yourself. You know, there, there's some risk being by yourself too. We're gonna to talk about it in the cons section of this video. Um, but just one person that's being exposed to injury or that could possibly have a, an insurance claim for your business because you are it, you are the business. And uh, so anyway, it is less exposure. There's benefits to that and there's obviously negatives to that. But I think it, in this situation, I'm putting that under the pro list of five pros of being a solo operator. Now let's move on to the five cons of being a solo operator. You thought it was all great. I made it sound so good that you were ready to sign up to be a solo operator. Let me see if I can talk you out of it. Even though I'm a solo operator and I actually do think it's a great thing. Here are the five cons of being a solo operator. And please add to the list and disagree if you want in the comments or agree if you want to do that if you're a glass half full kind of person. All Number one con of being a solo operator in no particular order is all the work falls on you. Hey, I've got a huge landscape installation job today and guess what, you got it by yourself, you know? It, and it sort of limits you honestly on, on what the scope of the work you can do. I mean, let's say you were a landscaping company for real and you're gonna go put out 20 pallets of sod by yourself, you know, I doubt it. I mean, you wouldn't walk for about two weeks, you'd be so sore. It, it limits you, you know, and, and then again, it's you. I mean, it's all on you and you're gonna get tired and there's things that, that happen, there's no help. And so sometimes when, if you've been mowing grass solo by yourself for 10 years and you find somebody that's a really great person to work with that comes, jumps in with you for a couple of days, you're gonna say, wow, I didn't know what a difference it made having that guy helping me mow grass we were so much faster and i was so much less tired at the end of the day not having to do everything by myself and maybe even have somebody talk to maybe enjoy that maybe you don't that is a side note of being solo i, I often i don't have anybody to talk to so i just i listen to a lot of audio books podcasts things like that and i think that is helpful it helps me uh stay a little more educated the second con i want to mention is limited growth okay so yeah all the work falls on you but you know you you, you max out what you can do if you're mowing grass and you say, I can do 100 yards by myself in a week or whatever, and that would be a pretty impressive week and lift their little small yards. I mean, at some point that you can only do what you can do and you just can't take on any more. I mean, you just, you just not, you, don't, you can't physically do it. There's not a time allows you to do it. 
and so you just say there will be a cap of how much you can grow solo now you can go up on their prices a little bit you might find a, a little tighter route that improves your bottom line some those are things that i recommend that i'm doing for my business but at the end of the day when you get all your schedule full and you say i'm gonna work five days a week and i'm working 10 hours a day i mean yeah you can go five days a week 11 hours a day five days a week 12 hours a day but i mean at some point you're gonna reach your max and you're done you can't take on another customer without just losing sleep the third thing i want to mention is a con is hey what happens to you if you get hurt something goes wrong with you the business is really gonna suffer you know so my plan i just tell you thinking through that i'm thinking I like being out there taking care of yards. I just kind of enjoy it. But if something happened to me, I got hurt. I have to do a couple things. One, I have to try to hire somebody really quick. And I, I think I could. I think uh, another tip on that is you want to make sure your business is profitable enough, even if you're doing it solo, that where when you did hire somebody, you'd still make profit. Now, it may not be quite as great, but um, hopefully you, you're, you're charging a, you're not saying just because I'm solo, I'm just going to charge dirt cheap prices you know i don't think that's a good strategy but if i was to get hurt i'd either have to do that or i'd have to kind of call on some friends of mine who do the similar type work and get them to help me out until i was able to get back up on my feet so one of those two situations would probably happen and who knows maybe if that happened that would force me to hire somebody and i would think that was great and i would never look back and think why in the world did i work solo i don't think that would be the case but it is a risk that you run working solo if something happens to you the business owner it may be worth looking into some kind of supplemental insurance just in case that does happen. I thought about another one. The fourth con I want to mention is the limited amount of skills that you have. Now, maybe you're just the handiest guy around and you are literally good at everything in lawn care. I mean, there's nothing you can't do and you're actually the best at everything. That's usually not the case. And if you think that's the case for you, you're probably mistaken you probably could find somebody out there who's better at certain things than you. So for instance, if I, I would love to have an employee, if I had an employee, I'd want him to be very mechanical, just could kind of fix stuff that went wrong, because that's not really a strength of mine. And if I had an employee that was way better than that, I would just, I would just, anytime something broke, I'd just like, please just fix that, just fix it. If that's the only thing you get done today, please fix that thing, because I'm so mad I can't see straight looking at it. But I mean, think about it, if you're solo, you're limited to your skill set. You know, there may be a guy that you could get into doing some uh, landscaping because he's just the ultimate landscaper and it's not you. You're great at this other area. It limits the amount of skills. Now, in one sense, that may force you as an individual to develop your skills and to try to grow your expertise to, to open up yourself to more opportunities. Um, but you get the point. Number five con of being a solo operator is, hey, no matter how old you are right now, you're not getting any younger, okay? So I'm still young and able-bodied and able to get out there and do things and it's fine. Um, but even for me, I've began what I call age-proofing my lawns, okay? So I uh, do weed control and fertilization. This would be the same if I was mowing lawns, but we live in an area with a lot of hills. I'm pretty much trying to take on small, flat yards that are fairly easy. You think, well, Jason, can't you do a big hilly yard? Of course I can do a big hilly yard. Do I want to do a big hilly yard? No. Would I rather do a small flat yard? Absolutely. I find them more profitable, but even more than that, way more enjoyable. So I'm not looking for super challenging yards. I'm wanting a yard so little and tiny and easy that if I was 85 years old, I could get out there and spray that yard and fertilize the yard and it wouldn't be a big deal. You're probably not going to have superhuman strength forever if you're young and active. It will catch up with you at some point. Now, yes, I, I worked with a guy one time in his 70s and he was out there mowing lawns and doing fine. I mean, I'm not saying, I know people, they get all defensive here and they say, I'm 60 something years old and I outwork all these 20 something year olds and all that. Go ahead, put all that in the comments if it makes you feel better about yourself. I understand that older people can still work. I'm not saying you gotta sit in a rocking chair all day, but the point is being that you probably can't work as good as you could when you were 25, okay? Just admit that. Just humble yourself and say, you're right. I am slower than I used to be. I'll say that, I'm slower than I used to be, but guess what? I'm actually faster than I used to be on the lawns because I'm smarter and just understand what I'm doing better, okay? But that's even gonna fade out at some point. Maybe I'm 
at a, at a sort of a prime where I'm not as fast physically as I used to be, but I'm actually a little smarter, so overall I'm a little faster. But in some sense, I'm not gonna get any much smarter on the lawns, and I'm gonna start getting slower. And so that's, even that curve is gonna work against me in the long run. So that was my list. Please add to it, let me know what you think. But also, you know what, don't get frustrated. If you're working solo, try to max it out, try to increase your profits, improve your route density, go up on prices if you need to, and maybe even look at subbing some things out, other ways you can grow your business financially without necessarily hiring somebody if you're really averse to hiring somebody. Now, maybe it grows to the point and you just feel like the growth opportunity is there that you look into hiring somebody. And I think that's fine to me. The key to that is, one, yeah, finding the right employee and all that, but I think your business has to be healthy enough financially to where when you hire somebody, it doesn't put a strain on your business. So many times it seems like people, uh, they hire somebody and then they say, oh, I wasn't making any more money when I hired somebody that I was working by myself. And the reason their business was not that great before they hired somebody, so when they hired somebody, it put a strain on it. And of course, you know now the cost of labor is significantly up over what it was just a few years ago. So you have to be profitable and maintaining high profit margins in your business to be able to afford to bring on employee or else you're really not benefiting yourself a whole lot. I'm Jason Creel, thanks for watching the video. If you're going to the Equip Expo this year, which used to be the GIE Plus Expo, you can use the promo code Lawn Care Life, all one word, uh, and you'll get 50% off your registration. Also, if you want to get in the lawn business, weed control, fertilization, mowing, mosquito spraying, there's a lot of resources over at LawnCareLife.com. You can check those out. Also, I've got around a thousand videos on this channel. Surely there's some of them you like. You can click on my channel name and scroll through the videos, or you can watch these that are suggested popping up for you now. We'll see you guys in the next video. In the comments section, like the video. Also, if you're thinking about getting into weed control and fertilization business or mowing business,